All right, hello again, everybody. Welcome back to Airbus 320 Tech Talk. What do all those buttons do? Thank you again so much for joining me today. The topic of today's discussion is going to be the wheel page on the A320 status display. But before we get started, as always, if you like what you're hearing and seeing, please go ahead and hit the like button, hit subscribe, leave comments down below. All that kind of good stuff just helps me keep this channel moving forward and hopefully fun, engaging, and exciting for everybody that's watching out there. So. We'll go ahead and bring up our slide that we're going to take a look at today. So as I mentioned, the wheel page on the SD here. So the uh, first thing I'll do is I'll, I'll just kind of go over the indications that we're seeing here at this point in time. Now remember, this photo was taken. We're up at cruise. So everything is, you know, gear is retracted. And, there, you know, there's not a whole lot of excitement going on in the screen, unfortunately, at this point in time. But, uh, you know, we'll, we'll build on that a little bit. And I'll, I'll show you a few more slides to demonstrate a few of the points that I have to talk about. But let's just go through these things really quickly here. So up at the top, we actually have an indication of the spoilers and what they're doing. Now, the reason why these are up here on the wheel page is actually interesting. When you land the Airbus, the very first thing that happens when the, the plane gets a, uh, a weight on wheels signal, let's say with the, the status display here, anyways, is that the, it automatically brings up the wheel page. Now, one of the things that we're looking for when we, when we first touch down and we land is we wanna um, make sure that the spoilers have extended. Uh, this is actually a call out uh, that the pilot monitor will make to the uh, the pilot flying just to you know affirm that uh, you know the, the, the plane is doing what it's supposed to be doing. We're, we're gonna decelerate as we're planning on doing so. Um, and of course, along with that, you know, the, the other piece of information that we would want to know at this point in time is, you know, yeah, what is the condition of our wheels? You know, if, if there is a problem, you know, what's happening down here? This this can kind of give us a little bit of indication of, of a few of those things. And, you know, it's it's interesting that in the real time, I mean, if this was all playing out and happening, I mean, it would, it would kind of be hard to, to take your attention off of, you know, what's going on outside of the airplane and look down and focus uh, on this wheels page specifically. But that's just... You know, a little bit about the reasoning about why this is set up the way that it's set up. And, and as I said, you know, one of the first things that grabs your attention is just, like I mentioned, the fact that they did put the spoiler indication up here. But that is why that is there for us, um, is that it's the way it functions. But um, moving down from there, we have just a few indications here. You know, these the, the green lines here essentially tell us the condition of the gear doors. You know, in this case, the, the gear is up and retracted and everything is showing green. It's normal. So all the, the gears have functioned properly and uh, everything is stowed, and um, that is uh, pretty much that. Um, you know, if, if we were to, to you know, reach over and lower the, the landing gear handle at the, the appropriate time, of course, you know, we would see these gears actually, um, or the doors anyways move, and we'd see these green triangles pop out below here, just to tell us and affirm that you know, the gear is down and locked, and um, you know, once again, it's, it agrees with the position that we put the switch in. Down from there, we, we have uh, these indications here, and these are just the, the temperatures of the brakes exactly themselves. So, um, you know, let's let's first talk about, you know, why this is important. Um, the, the brake temperatures in and of themselves, you know, they, they really are, um, you know, they, they're required to be at a certain uh, temperature point, let's say, or below a certain temperature point, because so much of the braking effectiveness that the airplane uh, is able to utilize is actually, um, it's uh, it's dependent on the brake temperatures. You know, if, if the brake is uh, too hot, then the efficiency of the, the braking is actually compromised, and the airplane is going to take a longer time to actually stop. So you know, we when we sit down and we do performance calculations, and we figure out you know how how much distance is actually going to be required to stop the airplane at a given weight and you know weather scenario. Um, it is assuming that you know the brakes are at um, their designed temperature point or below that, anyways. Let's say now the. The limitation on the, the Airbus to um, to take off is actually 300 degrees Celsius, and that just falls in line with everything I just said. It's it's a performance-based type of thing. So, um, you know, there's there's these indications here that you know these little half moon-looking curve things here would actually change colors. Uh, you know, there's a I'd have to you know look at the book once again. To, um, there's a, a, a like a color scheme, let's say, that goes from green to amber and changes to amber when you get above that 300 Celsius uh, degree mark there. But um, just, uh, you know, something to put out there and, and let you guys know about that. And, you know, this is this is really interesting, too. I mean, at this point in time when the, this photo was taken, we were probably an hour and a half or so into our flights. So we're up at altitude, and you can see, like, the outside static air temperature at this point is it's very cold. It's negative 48 degrees uh, Celsius there. And you can still see it's interesting that the brakes have retained this much heat. So... Um, you know, here we are, 55 degrees, 50, you know, et cetera, et cetera, at, at this point in time. And, and this is, you know, also leads into another, um, you know, point that I wanted to make is just, you know, when we are on the ground, um, you know, most of the time, the, the hour or so that the airplane is sitting between, you know, 
this, you know, the end of this flight operation until the, the point of time we go out on the next flight operation, that's usually enough time for the brakes to cool by themselves. But um, if you are in the type of situation, let's say you landed at a, um, an airport where it's very hot outside or maybe there's a quicker turn and you want to uh, cool these brakes off quicker, there's actually a couple ways that we accomplish that. And there's a few slides that I'll, I'll bring up here and show you. Um, now the, the number one and the, and the most efficient way, let's say, uh, to cool these brakes are is some of the, you know, the Airbuses actually have these brake fans that come installed on the, the wheel assemblies themselves. And, and this is an optional thing. You won't see this on every Airbus that came, um, you know, off the assembly lines, let's say. But, you know, if the, the purchaser desired to have this feature, there's actually a brake fan unit that um, is, is built, as I said, you know, right onto the wheel itself. And there's a switch um, in the forward part of the panel there that, you, you know, it's very simple, just an on-off switch. But you can use these brake fans and uh, you, the brakes actually cool in a, a very quick uh, period of time. And I, I couldn't tell you like a number of minutes, like right off the top of my head. And of course it varies, you know, as, as far as like how hot the brakes were. Uh, you know, when you turn the switch on, but this, it's just one interesting thing. If you see this type of assembly on one of these wheels, maybe you're curious about that because it does look very different from a normal wheel assembly. That is just a brake fan and that's what it's there to do. So if we don't have brake fans attached to the actual airplane, there's uh, ground servicing units that a lot of stations will have and they'll look something like this and they're, they're very simply just fans that the, the ground crews will wheel out and they'll bring up and they'll, they'll set them up, you know, right on side of the wheel assemblies themselves and it'll just blow air over the, the brake assemblies and it'll of course dissipate the heat and cool these off in a much um, much more rapid, let's say, uh, amount of time than, than if we were just sitting there, uh, like we said, and letting them cool naturally. And the, the last thing just to, to wrap that up with is just to, you know, kind of reiterate, you know, the importance of keeping these brake uh, temperatures in check. Now this is a very extreme example. This photo was a, this was a TAM aircraft coming in. I, I can't remember which airport this happened at, but you can see here that you know they had. Um, I'm assuming they rejected a takeoff in this scenario, uh, or maybe they landed and there was some you know extenuating circumstance about this why this situation presented itself. But the the brakes had heated up to the the uh, such a high heat point that they actually caught on fire. And of course, this is you know such a, a hazard to us for obvious reasons. You know, a fire could lead way to you know the whole airplane catching fire or you know in a uh, catastrophic enough sense. I mean, there could be an explosion that comes about you know, with a fire burning down here um, underneath this uh, portion of an airplane here. So it just, it just kind of drives home the fact about, you know, the importance of like, you know, why we need to keep these brakes cool. And just, just also the fact too, that, you know, there is these extreme temperatures that are occurring down there below the airplane when we're, we're breaking or, or we're dissipating this much, you know, energy, let's say with a heavy airplane into those brakes there, they're just having to absorb a lot of that energy in a form of heat there. So it's just something that I don't think, you know, we, most of us don't really think of uh, in our, you know, our normal, you know, train of thought, you know, when we're out there flying as passengers or even as pilots, you know, we just kind of do what we do, but we forget how much energy is really pent up, you know, down in those brakes there. So it's just uh, an important thing to take note of. So, and one more thing to wrap up, uh, just to circle back a little bit to some of the other indications that you'll see on the screen there. Um, this is the, the graphic just out of the FCOM once again there, so I apologize for the lack of color coding. But you know, the other big one that we'll see here is the, the down indicators, just showing that the gear is in a down and locked position. And, and this screen here, there's, there's a lot more wording on here than would ever actually appear. And just you know, keep in mind, this is out of the flight manuals, and it's there for the purpose of just showing you all the possible things that you might you know, see it at any point in time uh, on this screen here. But uh, just just to, you know, put some general attention to this fact that, you know, there's there's other things that this wheel page will be able to tell us as far as, you know, the, the condition of the braking system, if there's a problem with the anti-skid, you know, the, you know, which braking system is, is being used, you know, what's the auto brake setting. Um, one more slide to show you here. It's, it's kind of an interesting one. I, I had to dig uh, kind of deep for this one here, but you, you might have noticed on the page or the wheel page there that I, I brought up initially, you had this little REL. Uh, this actually means released. And uh, there's these little tick marks that come up and I, they're in green on the real airplane. Uh, but this is just a, a warning indicator to, that would alert us to the fact that for some reason, one of those brakes did not release its pressure and it was locked in place. You would get this little tick mark on the side there that would just kind of tell us that that was, uh, you know, what was going on down there. So as I said, I mean, you could pause the, the presentation at any point if you want to, uh, you know, absorb those graphics a little bit more. But uh, that pretty much wraps up everything I wanted to tell you guys about the wheel page there. If you have any questions about any of that stuff, as always, uh, feel free to leave the comments down in the section there uh, down below, and I'll do my best to field them for you. So I uh, hope everybody's having a wonderful day. Hope you're all staying safe and healthy out there.
uh, with everything going on in the world right now. So thanks again for tuning in, and we'll talk again real soon. Have a great day.